forgetting, nope, forgetting. Yep. <laughs> oh, for the whore. Yep. Please. <coughs> ah, my god. I'm okay. I'm okay. We're good. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my May wrap up. I read a total of 21 books so far this month. It's the 29th right now, and I'm reading Cress by Marissa Meyer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it in the next three days, so I'm not counting it right now, but... I'm splitting this wrap-up into a couple parts, either two or three, I'm not sure yet. I think I'm going to do about ten books in this wrap-up. So for the first five books, if you want to hear my full actual thoughts on them, then I would suggest going to my rib set wrap up because I talk about them in a lot more detail. I'm only going to skim through them very very fast in this wrap up because I've already talked about them so I don't want to just repeat myself because I feel like that's going to be a boring video. So head on over there if you want to know about these first five books. So without further ado, let us get started. The first two books are from the same trilogy. They are the Summoner Trilogy by Taran Matharu, and the first book is The Novice, and I absolutely love this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I put it in my favorite shelf on Goodreads because that is how good it is. And the second book is The Inquisition, and I also gave it 5 out of 5 stars. And it is also on my favorite shelf. I love these books. I got them as part of a tour for booktube and that's run by Gracie over at Lovingdom Books. I'll leave Gracie's link down below if you want to check her out and I'll also leave the booktube tour page down below if you want to check that out too because, because I would highly recommend being part of it. It's so much fun. These two books follow Fletcher and he is able to summon demons and that's all I'm gonna say because really that's all you need to know. Demons and a boy and magic equals a great book. If you want to pick these up, they're out now. This is actually on the New York Times bestselling list. The next book that I read this May is Zoe Letting Go by Nora Price. I did not like this book. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Zoe who has anorexia and she gets shipped off to this camp retreat center to try to help her, but she doesn't think she has anorexia. And it's just this whole mess and I just I don't like it. The next book that I read in May is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. It's about this girl named Emily and her best friend Sloan, and they have this huge summer planned. And then Sloan disappears and she leaves this list of 13 items that Emily has to achieve or accomplish in order to find Sloan. This was my first Morgan Matson book, and I absolutely loved it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Thought it was really cute. Thought it was super summery. It was exactly what I needed when I read it. The next book that I read in May was The First by PJ Ferguson. I read his book Daddy last year, absolutely loved it, 5 out of 5 stars. This one I didn't enjoy as much. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was still super good. It follows this guy named Alex and he's a middle-aged man. He's very bitter at the world. He's never felt like he fit in. And then he witnesses this crime that involves vampires and he suddenly feels like he is where he belongs. The only thing about this book is that the author says that you should go into it with the thought of being open-minded because it's very controversial in the way he explains religious things and stuff along that nature. So if you're very religious, go into it with an open mind. I highly suggest reading it. It was really interesting. The sixth book that I read in the month of May is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Rachel and she's an alcoholic. She takes the same train, the 804 train, every single morning and it passes through the neighborhood where she used to live with her ex-husband Tom. Four houses down from her old house lives the happiest couple she knows who she's nicknamed Jess and Jason. Then one day everything she knows changes when she sees something on their patio that really disturbs her. Now Rachel finds herself in the middle of their lives and she might be in danger herself. I think that this book was very hyped up. I had a lot of expectations going into it, especially because it's going to be a movie now. A lot of people have been talking about it, so I had very high expectations. And I would say they were kind of met, but also kind of not. The book is told from three perspectives. One is from Rachel's perspective, the other one is from Anna's perspective, who is Tom's new wife. The third perspective is Megan, who is the woman Rachel has nicknamed Jess. I thought it was really interesting how the author flipped 
between each perspective. I thought it was really well done. I found the book very hard to put down, which was really awesome. I wasn't able to call a lot of the twists that happened, which was also awesome. Because usually I can call twists like there's no tomorrow, but... I could not call a lot of these twists, and the ending, I did not expect that ending whatsoever. I thought it was really thrilling. It was really fast-paced. All the characters were terrible, terrible people, except for Kathy. Kathy is Rachel's roommate, and she was so nice to Rachel. And even though Rachel was such an unreliable narrator, and I didn't like her, I also loved her at the same time, and I found myself rooting for her, and I wanted her to get better and things to go right for her. The seventh book that I read in the month of May is The Magician by D.A. Poopa. I loved this book. I give it a four out of five stars on Goodreads. I have a full review up of it if you want to see like my full, full thoughts on it. It's going to be right there. This book follows Frank Sorello, who is a retired FBI agent who recently lost his wife to a serial killer. And he's reading this best-selling novel and he realizes that some things in the novel are kind of suspicious and they relate to his wife's murder and so he decides that he is going to join the FBI again and catch the serial killer before he strikes again. The dialogue was kind of annoying in this book, that was the only really big complaint I had, but I've had the opportunity to read the first eight chapters of the second book. And let me just tell you, let me just tell you, the second book is going to be so much better than this one, which is saying something because this book was real good. The dialogue is so much better in the second book, and the action in it is going to be incredible. I'm so excited for it, and I cannot wait till next year when it comes out. The eighth book that I read in May is Jay's Journal by Anonymous. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars. I ended up buying this book because it says Jay, and my name is Jay, and you know, I like having things with my name on it because I never find things with my name on it, so I was very excited about this book, and then I was so disappointed with this book once I actually read it because it's just not good. It's so boring. So this book follows Jay, who was 16 and a half when he took a bullet to the right temple. Basically, this journal was given to Dr. Beatrice Sparks by his mother in hopes that it would help raise awareness about depression, and in this journal, Jay talks about getting involved in drugs and the Oculate, which is like a Satan worshipping group. So, I thought this was sounding super interesting, it was going to be super cool. No, no, no. I found out that this is actually the journal of a boy named Alden Barrett. In his original journal, he didn't talk about any of this stuff that Dr. Beatrice edited, and apparently she added all this stuff about the devil worshipping and stuff like that. It was set in 1978, and the people found out whose journal this actually was because she didn't change enough details about it but apparently like they like drove the parents of this boy out of the town and like basically disowned them. I just think that it's not fair because she changed all this stuff and then said it was his real journal when it wasn't so it just irritated me and I found it really slow and boring and I, this was a huge disappointment to me. One out of five stars. That hit my leg and it really hurt. The ninth book that I read this May is Living Dead Girl by Elizabeth Scott. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Ten-year-old Alice was taken by Ray five years ago. She now endures the physical, sexual, and mental slash emotional abuse that Ray puts onto her every single day, and it basically just follows her story. And I've heard from a lot of people that this was like an amazing read, but it was very disturbing, and I completely agree with that. It was very hard to read. I thought it was very fast paced and the writing style was so unique, but it was so disturbing to read and it like made me uncomfortable. So I only gave it three out of five stars just because I was just like, no, like I, I can't deal with this. I think that it's a great book to raise awareness and everybody should read this book, but it's very hard to read. It's, it was disturbing. The final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap up. I'm gonna have another one up probably tomorrow. It is A Cure for Madness by Jodi McIsaac. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So this book follows Clara Campbell and she has done everything in her power to distance herself from the place she grew up in. After her parents are murdered by a very close friend, she has to return to Clarkston in order to become the legal guardian to her brother Wes, who suffers from schizophrenia. When the people of Clarkston start showing symptoms of schizophrenia without any warning, the government steps in and they take a special interest in Wes and his mental illness, 
and now Claire has to decide whether or not to protect her brother or hand him over to the authorities to go through a whole bunch of procedures and tests in order to save the world. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was super fast paced and thrilling and I couldn't put it down. I only ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars instead of a 4 because of the ending. I just thought that it was way too quickly done and it was very open-ended and there was a lot of things left unsaid or explained. Up to your interpretation what happened and I have my theories but I want a sequel to know actually what happened because I'm actually really curious. And also I didn't really like Claire. I thought she was kind of annoying and the things that she decided to do were kind of impulsive and she didn't think about the consequences that were probably going to happen if you thought logically and she treated everybody around her so badly and just she was frustrating to me so I also dropped a star for that. Alright guys so that was the first 10 books that I read this month. I will do my next 11 books probably tomorrow. I might split that up too and do 5 and 5. I haven't decided yet. I guess you all will see in my next video as well. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.